What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. How it, big was the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs? It, I th it, it was probably... Um, it, was, it was between... One in ten kilometers across in size. See, that's not that big. I know, but it. I know it is not big. A one kilometer asteroid would that hit the Earth would cause massive def uh, uh, devastation. And Hundred how meters so? wouldn't, but uh, one kilometer, and so ten kilometers is probably Earth life destroying. Is it because the force of the impact gets it down to like the core? No, or, no, or, no, or not no, nothing core, like that. Like no, 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 no. It didn't. This one that the, that the one that killed the dinosaurs that. Landed in Chicxulub. It's landed. What there's a big crater in the underwater. Now it's underwater in Central America, and um, so it wasn't the crater. It was. It produced a lot of things like tidal waves. But it also in the at, in the atmosphere, it's going very fast and it and it burning hot and it produced and it knocked out stuff that would produce fires throughout the whole world. So you know, there's many w different ways you could have imagined. So that could have changed the climate and destroyed. Dinosaurs. It might have affected the the oceans, the, the acidic level of the oceans from all the, uh, uh, the 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 force of the impact and the fires that happened. So there's lo no one. I think it's not clear what mech, what exactly killed the dinosaurs, but but uh, as a result of that collision, but it could do many different things that would do it. And so you wouldn't want to be around when such a thing happened. Do you? Although have... the smallest mammals survived, right? And like we're what? lucky that they survived because they became birds and, and everything else that we... Uh, what mammals survived? Well, we, I mean, there were small... The, the ancestors of birds and, and, and that are now birds who are little dinosaurs. And, and, uh, and the point is that big things tended to not survive. Little things tended to survive. And those little things, if nothing survived, we wouldn't be here, right? No. So some things had to evolve, evolve in, and, and into us, survive and evolve into us. So we're lucky. Where we're that that you know that they were and we're an accident. If that that hadn't happened, you know maybe that we'd be be two dinosaurs having a podcast right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I mean if you talk to I other like physicists, they <laughs> if you talk to other physicists, they'll talk about. And I don't want to get to multiverse yet, but yeah. sometimes if you look at like theoretical multiverse, it could sometimes even be where we're tuned to yeah. just the right frequency that there's dinosaurs in this room right now in another reality. In another reality, yeah, that's a little metaphysical for me, but it's yeah. It's definitely yeah. out there. Yeah. But, yeah. but what? how old were you when you first came up with your theory that everything came from nothing and that, to, you know, to extend that, that there is no God or, or something? Well, or I mean, I started to kind of figure the God thing was, was um, not likely when I was, you know, a, a kid, when I was 12 or 13. Why? I well, the story seemed kind of silly, mm. and everything I knew about the universe seemed to suggest that there weren't any miracles happening that I could see. And uh, Really? Yeah, yeah. You don't think it's some sort of miracle that something like the Big Bang could just... It's miraculous, but it's not a miracle. It doesn't defy the laws of physics. I think that that's sounds what... that sounds like I I didn't fuck her, but I used a condom. Yeah. Like, well, maybe, but I guess what? Do you, how do you define a miracle? Something that is behind that is beyond. Mm -hmm. See, you're physical, having a hard time. That something that is beyond what we know is physical possibility. No, that's not a miracle. That's just how do you define it? Uh, well, a miracle, I'd say, is something that violates known laws of physics. See, that's the very science answer. I yeah, like because it. It, you know, if it's just stuff we don't understand, that it's not miraculous. It's just amazing. Okay, and so maybe I shouldn't use the word miraculous. I should say it's amazing the Big Bang happened. But it's uh, but. Uh, is there it, anything we can't explain about the Big Bang? There's right lots now? of things we can't explain, but not like what? understanding. I've, what I've said many times, and listen to this carefully. Okay. And believe me later. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but <laughs> he's dying over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, is that not understanding something is not evidence for God? It's evidence for not understanding. There's a lot we don't understand about the universe, but that doesn't mean we'll never understand it. So we, you know, my new book, The Edge of Knowledge, is in the first sentence says the three most important words in science are "I don't know." Oh yeah. Okay, because not knowing is an invitation to explore and discover. I love that message. Yeah, it is more an important. People, more people need to hear that, not yeah. just in science. Yeah. Oh, and particularly not just in yeah. science, and and that's why I think it's important. But so so yeah, there's a lot we don't understand about the Big Bang. We don't understand when I talk about how the universe came from nothing. I can't prove. I don't have a theory of quantum gravity. All I can show is that it's plausible. 
And the fact that it's plausible that you can create a universe with 100 billion galaxies without any supernatural shenanigans is amazing to me. <laughs> and I thought amazing enough to write a book about. And, uh, and so, you know, what I can say is the following. If you asked, what would a universe that was created from nothing, that arose from nothing spontaneously by plausible extensions of the known laws of physics, what would such a universe, if it lasted 13.8 billion years long, what would such a universe look like? And the answer is, it would look precisely like the universe in which we live. Now, does that prove that's the case? No, but it's strongly suggestive. It would look precisely like, like the, the universe, universe in, in which we live. Because that's just operating under the assumption of what we, what no, we know no, that we No, no, I mean, in order to survive, you'd say, what would be the characteristics of such a universe that, would, that rose spontaneously, and what would the processes that would happen, what would it look like? What would it, would it look flat? Yes. Well, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it would look like the universe in which we live. So you'd say, well, okay, I can say that's a plausible reality. And the fact that I can, it's like, you know, let's go back to Darwin, okay? Darwin developed uh, evolution and that is the natural selection without knowing about genomics and without knowing about uh, DNA um, uh, uh, variations and spontaneous uh, mutations and uh, the basic fundamental underlying mechanism behind natural selection, uh, the, 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 the variations in genes among a population. He didn't know about that. But what he said was, look, it, it, you know, it, measuring finches in the in the Galapagos, among other things, I'll be in the Galapagos in a, in a month or two. Oh, that's uh, awesome! And, 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 that I can understand how that would happen plausibly. How over long enough periods, natural selection could operate to create a great, huge diversity of species uh, from a simple beginning. And he said, and he showed by a lot of different examples how plausible it was, and uh, but never, but didn't have proof of watching one of, of watching speciation happened and but the theory was so overwhelmingly plausible it was so much better than and and so much more reasonable that once he realized it it became obvious that it was probably true and now we know a lot more and we can test a lot of other things he couldn't at the time and so i kind of view this as the same thing that we can show this is plausible but we haven't yet gotten to the point either theoretically or observationally to demonstrate the details of that mechanism well i think it, i think at this point we've proven it that the concept of evolution is, yeah. abso is oh, yeah. absolutely true. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Well, the evolution is uh, undeniable happened. The Big yes. Bang really happened. But, but I can't prove to you that the universe arose from nothing. I can just say it's plausible, and it's more plausible than the alternative. But let's, let's stick with evolution for a okay, second. This sure. is where I always get confused. Where okay. When I start thinking about the timeline in my head, I'm uh -huh. like, wait, how does this make sense? So if we look at post-Younger Dryas, humanity is born again, right? So obviously, I guess it would be some people had to survive from the from the catastrophe and everything, but that means other animals. From which, from which catastrophe? From like post-Younger Dryas when you had uh, like, you know. Oh yeah, there were a lot of almost, there, there, well, I, I mean, happily in the time that, I mean, humans went through a bottleneck where humanity almost went extinct, probably in the tip of, of Southern Africa, where there may be a hundred individuals that How survived. How long ago are we talking? We're talking somewhere, um, in the neighborhood of less than a million years ago. Okay, all yeah. right, that makes okay. sense. So when we're looking at evolution, I always have to catch myself not thinking like, oh, the little microbiome started 12,000 years ago and got to this point. <laughs> Obviously, that's no, it not takes, the case. You need long, what, what, what Darwin first realized when he visited, when he went on the voyage of the Beagle, which is an amazing book to read, is it was geology that convinced him that the earth was really, really old, and that you, ha and that it, how, how difficult it is. We're not, we didn't evolve to understand. We didn't evolve to understand maybe hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years, but millions of years or billions of years are just beyond our, uh, you know, direct intuitive understanding. And it's hard to understand how gradual things that seem implausible over long enough times can happen. That's why most people, many people have a hard time accepting that evolution happened because they think, oh yeah, we have, you know, monkeys and, and us had a common ancestor 10,000 years ago. Well, that's not when it happened. Mm, Five yeah. million years ago, maybe. And, and so um, uh, it's that slow, gradual process of things accumulating over long times that took a while for Darwin to finally recognize. But it's the same thing. He looked at the... I, what, he looked at the stones. 
he, in south in, in the southern tip of, of South America when he was on the voyage of the Beagle and saw the mountains and he and he looked in the mountains and found fossils of of sea life. Okay, and he realized that there were geological processes that were happening inexorably slowly, so mm. that those you know at some point a long time ago. The, what was the mountain now was in the uh, under the sea, okay? And then the pebbles that came, you know, had to had to erode from erosion from large rocks, and and again, the time it would take to do that would be so long that he started to realize, okay, then other processes can happen that are inexorably slow, okay? I mean, and you know, looking at looking at, just look at the at the at the. Watch and and see if you can see the second hand move or the, you know or see the minute hand move. It's moving so slowly right. that you can't see it move. But a minute later, it's a minute further on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.